The Rosenhan experiment or thought experiment was an experiment conducted to determine the validity of psychiatric diagnosis. The participants feigned hallucinations to enter psychiatric hospitals, but acted normally afterwards. They were diagnosed with psychiatric psychiatric disorders and were given antipsychotic medication. The study was conducted by psychologist David Rosenhan, a Stanford University professor and published by the Shona Science in 1973. Rosenhan's study was done in two parts. The first part involved the use of healthy associates or pseudo patients, three women and five men, including Rosenhan himself, who briefly feigned auditory hallucinations in an attempt to gain admission to 12 psychiatric hospitals in five states of the United States. All were admitted and diagnosed with psychi psychiatric disorders. After admission, the pseudo patients acted normally and told staff that they no longer experienced any additional hallucinations. As a condition of their release, all the patients were forced to admit to having a mental illness and had to agree to take antipsychotic medication. The average time that the patients spent in the hospital was 19 days. All but one were diagnosed with schizophrenia in remission before their release. Now, the second part of the study involved a hospital administration challenging Rosenhan to send pseudo patients to its facility, whose staff asserted that they would be able to detect now the pseudo patients. Rosenhan agreed and in the following weeks 41 out of 193 new patients were identified as potential pseudo patients, with 19 of these receiving suspicion from at least one psychiatrist and one other staff member. Rosenhan sent no pseudo patients to the hospital. If you didn't get it, they didn't send any. So basically, they diagnosed them very falsely. Rosenhan concluded, or the study rather concluded, it is clear that we cannot distinguish the sane from the insane in psychiatric hospitals. And also illustrated, and this also illustrates the dangers of dehumanization and labeling in psychiatric institutions. As a resolution, and this is now my thinking, this just shows how even trained staff members, even trained psychiatrists who basically studied psychiatry are not just very good at determining whether a person is actually behaving or displaying insane or not insane healthy behavior.